Acclaim. On today's Spotlight segment, Ian features the director of the acclaimed short film, Living Funeral, which has been admitted to screen at the 2014 edition of the Cannes Film Festival. Let's meet Udoka Oyeka. Living Funeral is one short film that has garnered a lot of accolades. It earned eight African Magic Viewers' Choice Awards nominations, screened at the Pan-African Film Festival in Los Angeles and the African Film Festival in New York. And now, it joins the very few Nigerian-made short films to be admitted into the prestigious Cannes Film Festival. My mother didn't believe it. And for several nights, she acted normal. As expected, that is lifting for the film's young director, Udoka Oyeka. It's a very good feeling, like, you know, it's hard to, to describe it in words. Like, you know, the first few days after I got the email, I was, I don't think I was on, I don't think I was on this planet anymore. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a stepping stone, you know, and it's just, just confirmation that, you know, we're on the right path and you know, we should do more. We should tell more stories, you know. Are you calling rubbish now? You what, don't want rubbish. to go. go! That was a go, please. Oh, break it up now. Come over and eat your food. Well, you know, you know, Cannes is one of the biggest. Actually, it is the biggest film festival, you know, in the world right now, and um, it's very tough. It's very tough to get your film into Cannes. I, I wouldn't say I, I did anything different or special. I, I think I think it's the film. I think it's the story that we decided to tell, and the way we told the story. That I think I think that's what um, I think maybe that's what caught the attention. The short film was created to help generate some awareness for breast cancer, and it chronicles briefly the pains that comes with terminal cancer. Dear Diary, I'm writing this for the first and the very last time. Very soon, I die. You have been my faithful companion for so long. You're the only one who truly knows me. I used to look different, but that was in another life, another time. Now, I'm dying of cancer, breast cancer. I have about two weeks to leave, and I have come to terms with it, but my family hasn't. This is all that's left of me dearest diary and this is all there will be after I'm gone there's something about the film that people can connect to you know uh, it might be on an emotional level it might be on a technical level but you know people always seem to connect with the film My friend, um, Orade Ryan Opo, she runs uh, a cancer foundation and she had seen my previous film. She had seen uh, ZR7 and uh, Down and Out. And she had had the idea to make a film about, you know, to create awareness for cancer, you know. And, you know, there I am, her friend who is a filmmaker. She's like, okay, Yudi, let's do something about, you know, let's try and create awareness with, about, you know, for, for cancer, you know. And uh, that was the. That was the inception of the whole thing. The thing that she didn't realize is that about three, four months before that, I'd lost a friend to leukemia. You know, so it was, it was something that I, that I could actually tap into, maybe emotionally, in coming up with the story. Um, 
because I'd felt, you know, I'd seen his family. We grew up together, we played basketball together, and then, you know, it gets to a stage where the person's just lying in bed, you know, just, you know, it's, it's a sad sight. And I think maybe that's what I tapped into, uh, you know, I called my writer together and we sat down and came up with the story. Living Funeral also has on its cast Norbert Young and the delectable screen diva of the early 90s, Liz Benson, who before now has stayed away from the screens for over a decade. <laughs> Norbert Young had a scene, just one scene, in ZR7. So I built up a little bit of relationship with him. The people you love on this earth, they are really on loan, you know. And you better love them while you can. Um, Liz Benson, who is uh, a minister in the, in, in the church in Delta, you know, I really had to, had to hunt her down. We had to hunt Liz Benson down, you know. First and foremost, she doesn't do, she doesn't, she's very picky with, you know, the projects that she, that she takes on. Um, If it's not something that would educate the public or something that would push religion, you know, the, you know her message, you know, because she's, even when you're talking, she's, she's already preaching to you, you know, as she's very, very dedicated, you know. So um, we hunted her down, went back again, went back again, you know. I had to, I had to make her see what we're trying to achieve, you know. And I think, you know, there's a point where she, she, at a point, it doesn't, in fact, I think what really convinced her was the script. Because we had talk, 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 and it wasn't working out, and I sent her the script. She, it was when she read the script that she was like, I want to do this. She called me, I was like, I want to do this film. I think you need to eat some more food. You're getting thinner. It was so easy walking with her. Walking with her. She wasn't. Um, and then her mind she didn't give any problems on the set, you know. And everybody respect, you know. That's 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 actually Liz Benson. Now. So you know, there was no shouting, there was no fuss, you know. You know, she she's she's very professional. And even when even when there were times where we had to do like multiple takes, you know, she was hitting it and hit her performance in this film. You know, she was nominated for best supporting actress, you know, at the AMVCA for this film as well. Finding the lead character was difficult. The girl who played, you know, the girl with the cancer. And she also played the sister as well. Finding her was quite difficult. But I, wanted, I wanted someone that was skinny. I wanted, I wanted someone that looked like, you know, they've had a, a double mastectomy, which means, you know, no. Yeah. So that was very difficult because most of the actresses I knew, you know, it just wasn't, just wasn't happening. But luckily enough, um, my cinematographer had mentioned to me about this girl that he knew, and she fits the role. She's never acted before, but you know, with uh, my background in, as a trained actor, maybe I could, I could walk her through the project. You know, so I, I met her very nice lady, Stephanie Wilson. Um, so this was her first film, and uh, I think she nailed it. You know, she she was nominated for for best actress for this film. At the, at the AMVCA. Young man, you are in this school at last. I want to tell him if anybody makes it for this school, me day your back, you understand? I day your back. Udoka cuts his teeth in the well, filmmaking realm with the quite popular features. nostalgic film, ZR7. At that point, he just returned from studying theater at an American university. Well, what we didn't expect was for a scandal to break out in our school. As an actor, I wasn't seeing too many projects that I could get into. And I decided, okay, let's, let me make my own film. But I wanted to make film properly, the way film should be made, you know. We, we all know 
how intense you know mm -hmm. filmmaking can can be and you know we've seen how good um what fil what good films look like we know what good what a good film is when you see it you know we watch hollywood films even the bollywood films you know they look good on screen they look you know the picture is good the actors are good you know the sound is good you know so it's just it's just you know paying attention to details you know and um ZR7 was the first film I ever made by myself, you know. Well, I made it with a friend, but it's the first one we, you know, we ever made. It was the first time directing. Before that, I'd just been in front of the camera. And, uh, but, you know, I spent about two years doing research on, on, on filmmaking because I didn't, I didn't have the opportunity to go to film school. I leave this world with no regrets because I had the best there was in this short life of mine. And I leave behind hope. So I came up with a plan to leave those I love with something to ease the pain when I'm gone. A living funeral. Although Living Funeral received eight nominations at the AMVCAs, it walked away My from the awards empty-handed. It had been pitched Something against feature-length movies as a short film. It had very limited chances. Some kind of its qualities, or however, or whatever, remained the high up there with the rest this of way the best. The shock is reduced.